Hussning, please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I just have uh, one announcement, which is a uh, reminder to all landlords uh, that this is particularly nasty cold weather. And it, uh, don't be uh, surprised when it goes up to 50 degrees on Friday or Saturday. It'll go back down again. Um, from now until the end of May, uh, landlords are required to keep all apartments and hallways uh, in their buildings at 68 degrees minimum. So, uh, and to those people who rent, um, if you run into uh, difficulty with that, call the building department at, Christina? 941-3199. And if uh, it's after hours, call the police department at? 941-4099. Great. Thank you. Um, stay warm. <laughs> don't go out if you don't have to. Certainly don't drive on, the, on these icy streets when they are icy. Um, and stay warm and hydrated. And make sure that all of your neighbors uh, who have small children or uh, they're aged or they're handicapped have enough water and food and are warm. Anyone else? Yeah. <clears throat> For those of you who aren't sure, that white stuff that falls from the sky at this time of year, it's called snow. And it gets cold, it's called winter. This seasonal Alzheimer's that people seem to get, uh, I don't understand it. So folks, make sure you wear war clo warm clothing. Wear a hat, wear a scarf, wear gloves. Frostbite is no fun. Make sure you hydrate all the things that Bill said. But folks, it's winter. You live in the Northeast. This should not be a surprise, you know? Just saying. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I have, oh. I have a couple of announcements. Um, I'll remind everyone, as you are cold, if you're feeling um, that your home could potentially be warmer, um, I know a couple of my friends here might be able to attest to the fact that their homes might be a little more comfortable on these really cold nights than they have been in years past. Uh, please visit energizeossening.org and learn about how for little or no out-of-pocket expenses you can upgrade your home to be more efficient. Um, more inexpensive to own and a lot more comfortable. Um, so that's energizeossening.org. And uh, we have, um, I'll be talking later, I think we're doing liaison reports tonight, so I'll talk more about these groups. But we have positions available right now on um, the Environmental Advisory Council, and uh, I hesitate to even tell you about it because we've got uh, a few people that have responded um, to early announcements and, and some, really, some really great people. So I'm excited to be uh, refilling all of the positions uh, in the near future on the Environmental Advisory Council. But if you uh, have any interest in that, or if you are a tenant in the village of Ossining um, and you're interested in participating in the Landlord-Tenant Relations Council, um, we have one position for a tenant uh, to be a part of that council. And uh, you can send your le resumes and letters of interest or ha your questions to our assistant village manager, uh, Christina Papes, and here's her email address, cpapes at villageofostening.org, and her number, 914-941-3554. Thanks. And if you are uh, near a computer, you can look on the web to our code where you will find the uh, definition and the, the jobs of these two committees. Yeah, and it, it's just a really great opportunity for uh, people in the community to have a voice in something that they really care about. Um, uh, in a, a, a very clear role that, so that we can hear what matters to you and you can help impact decision making and, um, and, and how our village is, uh, is running, moving forward together. Next Thursday, uh, please join us at 6.30 at the Ossining Public Library for a screening of a movie called Bully. Um, we are partnering, um, the documentary discussion series this month will be partnering with Ossining Communities That Cares. They're um, the screening sponsor and we've got um, really great panel discussion afterwards. Um, it's about a story of uh, a boy who was um, really suffered at the hands of abusive bullies and uh, how his school responded or didn't respond appropriately and uh, his family uh, made it um, uh, their mission to make sure that other families didn't go through so much pain. Uh, and it's, it's uh, spawned a movement and um, the Austin schools have uh, 
they're very familiar with this it's, uh, through Austin Communities That Cares, and we've got a really great uh, panel of discussion um, that I look forward to uh, participating in. I hope you'll join us next Thursday, January 16th, at the Austin Public Library for that film and discussion. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, I want to welcome back our uh, traveling uh, trustee, now Deputy Mayor John Coburn. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It was a little, uh, little field trip. Uh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Learned a lot about municipal government uh, down under. I'll bet you did. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, Not marsupial government. No, municipal no, government. municipal. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, I, mm. I don't think I said that, but yeah, it could have been a mistake. You know, the jet lag still had still working on me. Here, so. Okay. <clears throat> Onward. Okay, thank you. We have several items on the agenda this evening. Uh, we've, the uh, formal part of the meeting will be followed by an executive session uh, for the purposes of discussing uh, specific personnel and also uh, uh, a meeting outside for uh, obtaining legal advice. The first item on the agenda this evening is a discussion on behalf of the Clearview School. The Clearview School is a school for children which is located on Route 9 in the Scarborough section of Briarcliff. It's just south of the village's border. Uh, Charles Devlin is the head of the school. He initiated a conversation, uh, I believe, with Henry Atterbury and it eventually came to my office. They are interested in discussing with the village the possibility of having a 5K uh, 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 run and a uh, walk as well. And we've had sort of preliminary discussions about it. I sent you all an email today on some of the concerns uh, from the administrative side. So, uh, you know, we're honored uh, to have Charlie with us this evening. So I'd ask you to come forward to the mic. I appreciate it. Uh, again, the Clearview School is almost in the village of Oxford. And uh, we would like to do more and more to uh, erase the almost. Uh, and I mean that very sincerely. Uh, when we had discussions uh, recently at Clearview uh, uh, concerning development and fundraising, which you know is a, has to be a large part of a school like ours. It's a not-for-profit not uh, school, which is called a non-public school. There are only a limited number of non-public schools here in the state of New York. Uh, all of our students are placed uh, through committees on special education by the uh, local school districts. Okay. Uh, and we are um, uh, supported by reimbursement through the state education department, through Med Medicaid, and the Office of uh, Mental Health and then uh, by the local school districts uh, uh, that pay us their per, pupil, uh, their per pupil allotment for any students that they place with us. All of our students uh, are placed uh, because of a diagnosis of mental illness uh, or emotional disturbance. And most, though not required, most have the dual diagnosis of developmental disability. We have at any given time 120 students. Uh, they range from pre-K through age 21. And uh, the, if you will, genius of Clearview, which is called a day treatment program, uh, is to uh, integrate, integrate uh, education with treatment. And uh, therefore, we have a full staff of therapists and educators who treat not only a student, uh, but uh, are in weekly therapy sessions uh, with the parents. Mm -hmm. um, most of our expenses are, uh, are funded through the state, as I said, and are reimbursable. But, <laughs> as uh, you well know, there is always a shortfall, and therefore we are always trying to uh, uh, raise funds. Uh, our development office is going 24-7. And so the recent discussion uh, about the uh, mounting a 5K run, 2K walk. No question about it. Our primary goal is to raise money. But a secondary goal uh, is to raise awareness uh, to, an to enhance our uh, public position. And I have to say, uh, in our discussions at the school, uh, locally. Uh, we have been here since 1981 on Route 9, and yet one of the things I've discovered, I was longtime <coughs> president of the board and only recently became executive director, 
it's a hidden secret. Uh, not too many people know about us, even though we've been a neighbor right here uh, down the street from the village of Austin. So we would like to en enhance our visibility uh, locally. And, uh, and this, therefore, would be a dual purpose, uh, to have the run, to raise money, but also to make people aware of what we're doing, how we do it, why we do it, and how important it is uh, that we do it. So uh, I've had some discussions uh, uh, with Henry, Henry Atterbury, who referred me to uh, Mr. Lyons. And uh, I will tell you, uh, uh, I'm an executive director, very involved in the school, very happy to represent them on this question, but I've never run a 5K <laughs> run. <laughs> so. Which was my question. Yes. I mean, how would that work? How, 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 do you, how are you going to raise, how do you raise money by having people run 5K? The way money is raised, and again, uh, our development office has already begun the, uh, the spade work for this. Uh, it's done quite often for not-for-profits of, of our type. And I have to say, our younger staff, the, the teachers and therapists that are on our staff, are very, very excited about this. How does uh, it work? And which is another uh, a goal of ours. It was to bring our staff uh, into more direct involvement in our fundraising. Uh, and so the staff uh, would do the run. Uh, they would get they would get on their face pay, their their Facebooks, their other uh, social media, get their friends to sponsor them. There you go. Yes. So so that's what happens. So I walk, and uh, Manny gives a dollar. Right. For every mile that I walk, is that, is that well, essentially? It, uh, uh, probably the, the better way to do it, uh, as has been suggested to me, number one, there would be an entrance fee for you to walk, let's okay. say $20. But you'd be in touch with the, you know, your, your friends, yeah. and you'd say, I'm running for the Clearview School, mm -hmm. and uh, could you sponsor me? And it wouldn't be by the mile, the easier way, a more efficient way would just say 10 bucks for, uh, for Manny, for running this, uh, for running the, oh, okay. the 5K. So in my case, my wife and my cardiologist would yes. pay to have me not run. Yes, yeah. How, whatever works. Yeah, whatever yeah. works. Well, you don't know that. I don't know if you want to. Just say, so. okay. <laughs> whatever works. So that's uh, that's the way it ha it has been done and done successfully uh, by by many a not for profit like ours. How many people? Uh, do you, do you expect to have running, and where are they going to run? Okay. Uh, as far as people expected, I this is the first time out of the box. I think we would be more than happy uh, to see 250 uh, participants. Uh, if we could do anything above that, again, that's gravy. But uh, you know, a reasonable expectation would be 250. And when I see that we have uh, right now 25 of our younger uh, uh, teachers and assistant teachers and therapists already uh, signed up. Uh, you know, I, I don't see it that difficult for them uh, to uh, uh, solicit friends, uh, and we haven't even begun to advertise, uh, to get that number up to 250. Okay. The question of the route uh, is really a question uh, that I ask uh, the board, uh, because we would like the route to be as simple as possible. <laughs> we, again, are, you know, this is our first time out of the box. Therefore, we would like to make this as successful as possible. We don't want to do glamorous. We don't want to do <laughs> complex. We want to do simple. Mm -hmm. Simple so that we could say at the end of the day, gee, wasn't that great? Didn't we do well? And we raised whatever we raised, and we made the village of Ostning happy. Uh, we, uh, we got some visibility, and some people said to us, gee, hope to see you next year. So uh, that's the question. What point in the year are you thinking of doing this? Uh, we would hope to do it in the spring, uh, and a, uh, a date that has been suggested is, the, is Sunday the 18th of May. Um, as I understand it, there was a 5K run here for Ossining Matters. Yeah, there is every year. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we looked at that route, and we understand that that route might be a little complicated for us and uh, a little uh, difficult to mount. Uh, it's been suggested that there may be another route. Well, did you look at the this year's route or the usual route? Uh, at this year's route. 
Oh, yes. The usual route is much simpler. Ah. All right. We convinced them to do it this year because we wanted to kick off Harbor Fest with the route race mm -hmm. on the water. Mm -hmm. But that's complicated. Yes. It involves uh, uh, <coughs> private property as well as public property. Yes. Um, and it also involves wending your way through parks and whatever. The yeah. other route is uh, is along the aqueduct for most of the route, for mm -hmm. at least two, what, 1K? Two along? three miles is on the aqueduct. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, again, uh, I, I uh, really defer, uh, you know, to your suggestions. Uh, uh, it's your village, and, and, and you know what, what would be best and what would be simplest, what would be uh, least expensive, least complicated, what would avoid uh, uh, problems with streets, uh, with police involvement, uh, you know, and other personnel here in the village. Thanks. So there was a number of questions, which we dealt with a few of them. First of all, I guess you have to make a threshold determination whether this is something that you'll be interested in entertaining. It's a entity from outside the community, so you have to expect that, you know, it's wonderful that they're here, but you most probably will get entreaties from other people as well. So do you want to cross the threshold and say this is something that you're interested in investigating? Yeah, no problem. How about you? Because then I can give you some of the details. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think we'll be... Yeah, and you, you're right. Uh, a lot of people, even myself, including myself, I've been mean, in the village almost 20 years, and for maybe five or even seven years, I didn't know what the white wall was and what the building was yes. until I, I talked to a couple of my neighbors, and they, they told me what exactly it was. So um, I have no problem with it. Yeah, no, no. All right. Yeah, I, 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 I actually really like the idea of, of um, doing the 5Ks in the village. My... Um, and, and you are, as you pointed out, a neighbor. You're not yes. technically in the village, but um, a nonprofit, so you wouldn't be paying, paying taxes if you were in the village anyway. Um, and, uh, you're <laughs> and you're pretty much adjacent to uh, village property line almost. I'm not sure yes. where exactly the line is there. But um, I guess my concerns would be there, there is some monetary expense for, uh, for closing roads and, and, and such that the village would be agreeing to take on. Um, and uh, not necessarily. Why is that? Well, okay. I mean, the, it that's would be our expense, it, but that's part of the discussion tonight as yeah. to whether or not an outside organization can use village facilities without paying okay. something towards that. So, I, yeah. I, okay. Then, then I guess my my question would be, um, and I don't know enough about, and maybe some of the folks on your team that have been researching it, I don't know enough about, uh, and this, not to sound callous at all, because I think it's wonderful in our organization, and I'm, I'm, I, w I will sign up and run. I ran a 5K once. I ran the Austin Matters last year, and I was the fifth to the last adult to complete it, but I did complete it. So I will train again, and I have to be ready much earlier in the season now. So this would be a good goal. Um, I guess I just sort of wonder, uh, whatever the path is, where people start and where people stop, can they um, – then stop at an Austining business and buy something? You know, like, is this an opportunity to get people into our community and see us in a positive light um, oh, sure. that wouldn't be here otherwise? Sure. You know, like, the, that when like we set it up, we hunt. have that in mind, that yeah. we have some reason for them to stay while they're all tired so and sweaty to go get, you know, a nice So buy a pair beverage. of socks from Bob's, get exactly. some water at the deli, yes. grab a toilet seat from, uh, you know, the plumbing supply. <laughs> Whatever. And, 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 and the farmer's market. Yeah, so and you I mean, continue that's, that's to have to carry them, so at the end you've well, got all this Sunday. stuff and you're running. I mean, I, I think we have something. While well, they're Isn't running, it? yes. Yes, yes. Well, I mean, that, that's just sort of where my mind is at, is if they're taking on an expense, what is, um, what is the benefit to the village long term? And if Clearview School does this, do we want to have, you know, how often does the village then decide that and we want to? Could it be sponsored, co-sponsored by a village organization? For example, the vi um, could, could the Chamber of Commerce uh, partner with them, much like the farmer's market does, so that if you partnered with, with another organization that is in the village and had them present it, I think that would probably address the issue of an outside organization pretty I know, we well. We have to look into whether uh, it, it, the only thing they do sponsor is an inside organization. Um, the, the farmer's market is an inside organization. The, what we have to look into is for it's a for-profit, yeah. yeah. Um, Right. Whether or not it is legitimate for one not-for-profit to sponsor another not-for-profit in order to avoid any cost, so that's something we need to look into. Luckily, we have a village attorney. We do. Hi. So the thing is, that's just, to, by we. just yeah, to sort of I update. Thought. It wasn't the royal we. 
Uh, just it sort of Lori Lee Wee. I had a okay. uh, conversation with um, Henry as well, and uh, I think with Charlie. And the way the route was originally on this was that it started from the community center and actually started at the aqueduct. It makes it just shy of a 5K, but it's like about a 5K. And in that way, um, they, if you're agreeable, they'd be able to use the community center on a Sunday for registration and whatnot. And then they could start the race up on the aqueduct right behind the building. They wouldn't have to go on any public streets. It would save them considerable amounts of money. There might be some cost attendant on opening the community center, but they won't have to. There may be some police presence required, but they won't need the three police officers that they would need if they started down at Market Square. So it seems so like better. So Richard, yeah, maybe so a little money. I think five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. So that's tops. that's the overall that we that, that the village will have to address is a uh, max a thousand dollars yeah I mean that's what we're looking at right now as opposed to that I think they changed the route recently so it used to start down in Market Square mm -hmm. and then they had to have everybody going up Main Street that involves a lot more police presence they don't need to do that this is their first time out they can try it out if it's agreeable to them and then they can just go from the community center signing it up on Sunday morning go behind the uh, to the aqueduct do their race and they'll be done. And Henry thought it was better than um, Saturdays because Saturday there's a lot more activity, a lot of spring activities. But Sunday morning, the only thing is you have to open the community center early. But that's bringing one person in to help do that. They would be responsible for leaving it in the condition in which they found it. And so you'd probably be talking five hundred thousand dollars tops. But you know we have to confirm that number. Not but five hundred thousand. Yeah. Five hundred or a thousand. Five hundred <laughs> or. <Yeah>. or uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, five hundred dollars or fifty percent of the take, whichever yeah. is more. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So, so much for the farmers. Yeah, market. I understand. I understand. So, so I think so we're I talking th about six hundred dollars. Probably, yeah. So, yeah. I, yeah. I think we're all in agreement that this is a good idea. Yes. And, uh, we like the idea, and we welcome you to do this. We need to work out uh, the financial aspects of it and make sure the route is is uh, settled in. Mm -hmm. uh, you should run the route tomorrow morning. Yes. Whether you like it. Yes. Um, but uh, but I took Manny's advice. It, it is winter. <laughs> yes, it is. It is indeed. Um, do we have any comment from our police department on this issue? Microphone, please. Microphone, please. Microphone. You're going to be on TV. <laughs> uh oh. The route you're describing requires five traffic crossings. Uh, I know because I was involved in organizing it originally. Mm -hmm. um, it also requires permission of a private landholder on the north end of the race at Marydale. But it's um, some mm -hmm. of them have been used by race marshals in the past mm -hmm. instead of police. But this will be a police presence, depending on what day. I'd have to, I'd have to, I I'd have to look at the at the schedule. Quite frankly, as a runner, local runner, former local, I can tell you that it doesn't involve the village of Austin, but you have a unique opportunity to run the race directly from your school south on the aqueduct and back with only one road cross. Oh, that's even better. That's an interesting. <laughs> oh, only somebody with a deep I, knowledge of Osney would be able to divine that right here at the meeting. Trail. I frankly <laughs> like the idea that they're coming here because it get, it's one more piece of good publicity for the village and good friendship for a, a neighboring community. So uh, keep that sort of thought to yourself for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I do have to say, uh, and again, in, in all sincerity, we want to come to the village of Austin. <laughs> we really do. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we, think it's, we think it's very important, uh, both okay. for us and, quite honestly, for the village of Austin. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah. I think if, we, if it's all right with the board, we'll leave the calculating of expenses to uh, Tom and Richard and, and, the, and police. the police. I, 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 yeah, that's fine. I just I would wonder if there's a, an opportunity in part of the conversation to if they're going to be starting <laughs> um, and finishing right there on at Main Street for us mm -hmm. where we have some downtown businesses. If there might be an opportunity, I don't know if the chamber can help. We happen to have somebody from the chamber board at the meeting right now. Um, or if um, just any of the local businesses there might be contacted in advance communicate with the school? Does anybody see an opportunity? Sure. I mean, obviously, Absolutely. just to make sure that they're not inconvenienced, but more than that, like, is there an opportunity where you can, you can be anticipating the runners and to encourage them to uh, show up and, you know, buy their running socks at Bob's before the race or something, sure. you know, not that day, perhaps, but 
It's a good thing. It's a <laughs> good know, thing. But to, to, to really take advantage of it and help offset some of the expense the villages might be incurring. Good. All right. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. We'll work this out with Richard's office. And so, we'll talk some more. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. you so Thank much. you. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, goals and objectives. I had sent you an email and I had forwarded a document along with it. So um, the whole uh, premise of this is that it's one of your, um, as a board, it's one of your sort of, uh, I would say, mo one of your more ex most exciting uh, functions of your position to come up with the goals and direct and objectives yeah, for what you would like the Village of Austin to be doing. Particularly, we're looking at um, for 2014. And uh, what we're trying to do is to isolate those things that the board individually and then ultimately collectively finds most important and things with that you would really like to see some progress made in 2014. You know, we can come up with uh, things, of course, that will, and, and ultimately they do end up spanning many years. However, uh, this is actually to try to function uh, to come up with these things that you would actually like to turn over to management so that we can work with the managers and try to address some of these long-term goals of where you would like the village to go, what it is that you have in mind for the village and where you would like to be. So what I did is I sent out to you, I just uh, really, I just quickly just thought of a few things that came to my mind as I wrote in the email. They're not definitive, you can scratch them, you can agree with them. The whole idea is just to get the conversation started so that, um, you know, we could start to compile uh, the things that you thought were most important. What we would like to do this evening is um, to uh, basically brainstorm. I think I started with maybe six or eight things. I set up a, a number of categories. You know, I'd like to ask you to provide other categories and also to offer up the things that you think would be most important. We can have a little bit of discussion about them, if you will. Once we have all that, I'll write down all the stuff that you're providing this evening. Uh, I will then, prov you know, give it back to you. And then we'll ask you to prioritize and to put them in uh, priority number based on one to whatever it is. And then we will take the top 10 or 15 and we'll give them back to you, you know, as, to, as compiled by you all. And that will actually give us uh, an opportunity on the management side to try to address some of the things that you deem most important. I actually looked, just a uh, retrospect, I just thought it was interesting. I looked back actually 10 years ago. I pulled out a memo from January 13, 2004. And it's interesting, how, first of all, how many things that were there 10 years ago are still there, which there are a few. But it's also interesting how many things have actually been accomplished in the village in 10 years. So I just thought just for your, you know, enjoyment, hopefully, I would just read some of the things that were on the list in January 13, 2004. Uh, number one on the list, resolve the Harbor Square project. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it should remain on our list. It's been nice if they had done that. No, number two, coordinate construction of the community center um, improvements, which included the pool and whatnot. So that was a big and a major project for the village. Uh, the third item was proceed with uh, parking meters and or parking garage in the central business district. So since then, of course, parking meters have been installed. I'm still talking about off-site parking. The fourth item was complete the State Street Firehouse. So that was a major firehouse project that was open um, at that time. Uh, they were looking for um, signage on the village gateways, which has been done. Cultural center acceptance was had to do with the um, New York State Cultural Center, Historic Center down at the community center. Um, improve the water treatment plant, which has, uh, under Andy Tease's leadership has been, you know, tremendously achieved. Uh, enhance code enforcement with multiple departmental approach. So that, that issue is always one that's around. Improve, efficiency, in, improve efficiencies in operations and sanitation services. Interesting. Uh, conclude that we can do it site conceptual plan and development. It's being done right now as we speak. Enhance intergovernmental relationship between the village of Briarcliff, the town of Austin, and the village of Austin, uh, which we're doing. Um, resolve traffic calming involving configuration of Route 9. And I'll be happy to give you a copy of this, by the way, too. Um, develop Hawks Avenue Firehouse. That never came to fruition because of a number of issues. 
um, construct streetscape and, and complete streetscape and sidewalk improvements as per CDBG supported enhancements, which was really Central Avenue and the project that you're just completing right now on Main Street and, um, uh, and Secor. Uh, another one was rebuilding this, rebid the Sparta Bridge, which I don't know was before a lot of people's time, but there was a railroad bridge uh, at Sparta that accessed the land on the other side, and it was taken away by Metro North, so there's always some discussion. Actually, it was a land <coughs> thing when Metro North added the third rail. It okay. was a, a level uh, crossing. Okay. Well, people crossed way. there, but I thought there was a bridge as well. I know that they ran across there, too. Yeah. Right. Um, then it's uh, resolve the Printex conceptual planning, which is the, the building right on um, uh, Broad Avenue at the bottom of the hill, and support the Chamber of Commerce. So, <laughs> so those were a few that were cited from uh, 2004. So I gave you this as sort of a sketch uh, um, starting point. So how would you like to proceed? I would like to solicit your input and if we can have a conversation about things that you feel are important. I have a list of things I think we all do. Okay. Um, and so if you don't mind, I'll start off. A lot of them will overlap. Uh, a lot of them I leave to the people who I knew were going to um, put them. And some of them I've actually incorporated some of your ideas. I incorporated here too. Okay. Um, I, it's very important that we complete the Harbor Square thing, the ladder and the pilot and get it moving, get it gone, um, and that's all a matter of language and uh, the uh, IDA at this point, I think. Um, expand the Downtown Development Committee will be a result of that ladder. Uh, downtown parking lot and market square development uh, with public participation. I think even before we send out an RFP, we ought to have some public participation in that. Um, the uh, the parking lot return from the USPS, um, United States Postal Service, they have that parking lot on St. Paul's and State, which uh, I drove past there yesterday morning at 6.30 and there wasn't a car in it. Um, there is rarely more than a handful of cars except when the fire department has a reason to use that parking lot. So we... Uh, have suggested that they give it back um, and or we, that we may have to buy it back and that we uh, we grant them a number of spaces there but but uh, the rest of it becomes village parking with the possibility of someday building a parking facility on that land mm -hmm. um, <coughs> Um, I met with, uh, well, we met with the planning board and the zoning board, and then I later met with Joe Clark, the chair of uh, the planning board, and uh, he and I decided what we would like to see happen is, and this is from discussions that we had, uh, that we as a board had, uh, we would like quality architecture in that downtown whatever development is done downtown and for that matter anywhere else. So we would like to see yet another guide, um, this time presenting not what exists or what would work with it so much as what kind of quality do we want to see. For instance, Palladian windows, a, uh, a brick Palladian window from, from Sparta a glass Palladian window set up from someplace else, a steel Palladian window um, showing that you can use different media and come up with quality architecture. Okay. Uh, so um, we're going to meet with uh, Richard and, and Valerie and see, um, come with a more specific proposal on that. Um, the Spring Street redesign and the, the uh, uh, attention to pedestrian traffic on that five-way corner um, uh, at the corner of uh, Spring, Main, Brandreth, and Central um, is, I think, really important. We're going to go ahead with that probably in March, um, at least temporarily. Um, when the situation 
comes up, I think we need to bid on both the, uh, if the town puts out an RFP on police and sanitation, we need to see if we can't make those uh, issues for, uh, for consolidation so that somehow, and we, since our, our subcommittee is going to be working on ways to save money, somehow uh, <coughs> we might be able to come in under the governor's proposed new concept of the two, uh, 2000, of the 2% 2 cap. Um, and I remember about four years, you know, five years ago or three years ago, I'm not sure, five years ago, I think, uh, I proposed uh, that, and it's been proposed before, that we merge the town and village parks department. Um, the, the town parks department has three employees. We have significantly more. Um, and greater facilities. So I think that's another potential area for consolidation. Um, and we ought to consider, as was proposed by the, uh, the previous PACE study, uh, we ought to consider uh, sharing with the town the purchase of equipment and supplies, sharing uh, not only the purchase of equipment and supplies, but perhaps sharing equipment um, investment pools, banking and consulting services, building and code enforcement, and employee training. Uh, we still we do some of that already, and we should look at doing more of it. DPW. Uh, yeah, DP we do. We do. Yeah, but the DPW, um, you didn't mention that as a consolidation. Yeah. Well, I didn't mention that because it's not likely to come about. Uh, but the sanitation, which we may not be able to do, but it's something we need to look at. Um, I know that, that Sue is looking at putting out an RFP on that, too. So. Um, in administrative things, um, it, one of the major objectives of this board has been for quite a while greater communication um, between the board and the manager's office and vice versa. And, um, so that I think is, is an objective that we need to, we need to uh, be able to look at and deal with. Um, we need to settle the PBA and CSEA contracts as quickly as the PBA and CSEA will come back to the table and, and work on that. It is always uh, from my labor background and from yours, it is always unsettling for people not to know what the future holds. Uh, that's, that's true for us and our budgeting, and it's true for, for them and their lives. So I think we need to settle those contracts early in the year. Um, and many, uh, the settling or, or simplifying the application process, we have the pay study coming, or all of that online stuff. Uh, I think that's important that we deal with. Um, it has been proposed that we have uh, police commissioner meetings uh, when and when there's an issue in, uh, in particular, but there haven't been issue issues so much as contractual issues, and that's not that, but that can be looked at. And for sustainability, um, uh, remember not terribly long ago we had um, a, a um, company come and show us LCD lighting for streets, and I think that is an important thing. I know Paul is already sort of playing with that, but I think we need to move on that. Uh, ultimately, uh, initial expense, uh, yes, but ultimately we'll save a lot of money. Um, wind turbines for residential and commercial properties. Um, we need to look into whether that's possible, and that's a sustainable uh, um, Westchester issue. Uh, solar panels for public buildings, and that's another place where we need to speed the process up in, in getting um, the permits through fast or, or uh, as quickly as possible so that people can actually do this without um, long, long waits. Chickens and bees, which have been sitting around or clucking around or buzzing around for quite a while, um, it's need a foul to be dealt with. Um, we need to uh, reestablish the public arts committee. Uh, it, we've had we've had one twice. I think once in the 80s or 70s, Richard, um, and uh, it was 
the 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 sculpture exhibit was hugely popular. It made it made a huge dent. We got a great deal of, of publicity out of it, but more important than the publicity was the, the way the majority of people responded to it, the way school children, um, just classes of kids, little, little kids, went and saw all of these, these sculptures and got excited about it, and people are still talking about it. There are people who don't like it, but I think the, this committee, if it can do uh, some good along those lines, I think is a valuable thing. Um, I want to pursue the Sing Sing Museum. HHRT is working on that. Uh, the uh, Sandy Galef and uh, and uh, David Carlucci uh, have talked to the governor about it and given him uh, a copy of the the uh, proposal. And then there is all that legislation uh, that I talked about last week. Last week, when was that? Kind of the long list of leg legislation, but. Um, I'm going to be working with Nita Lowy on, priori on federal priorities of the village of Osney. Um, CDBG funding release, crucial. Uh, the return of the, the parking lot, um, very important. And we need to come up with, with if there is federal legislation that we need to back as a board uh, that will uh, be important for the future of the village. We need to come up with that as well. What's the return of the parking lot? It's the post office parking lot. Oh, that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was through Nita that I got to the right people at the post office. And, yeah. Okay. That's what you got. Bob? Oh, okay. Uh, there's a couple of things. Uh, I'd like to see um, some attention paid to guidelines for uh, how solar panels are put on roofs and on property, uh, specifically with an eye towards the safety of our first responders. Um, there are all kinds of rules regarding um, firefighting and how you access roofs that have solar panels on it, because otherwise you electrocute your firemen, and they hate that. Um, we 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 want to keep our firemen safe. They're doing this for free, um, and that's a concern. Um, at the same time, um, we want to encourage more use of solar energy, both on municipal buildings and uh, in residential, and come up with easy, simple ways to get that to happen while keeping the people who keep the rest of the people safe safe. So that's a thing. Um, the, um, as, as you said, the police commission, as it turns out, uh, has been dormant for a really long time, and uh, Manny and I did some research, and it turns out the scope of the police commission is a lot broader than we had thought. And so we need to have a work session just about that and how to use that, because uh, we have powers regarding uh, nuisances and and building code violations outside the court, and it, it it gives us another avenue of enforcement that we did not know we had, which will be very useful, uh, uh, and we'd like to get that going. Um, we also would like to involve the fire department more. As it turns out, one of the big problems that we have in the village with the overcrowding in housing people who take a single-family house and make 17 apartments out of it. Um, and it puts strain on the infrastructure. And again, if there's a fire or the, or, or the uh, emergency medical technician or the police need to go into a building and it's unsafe, we put our police, our fire, and our EMTs in danger, and we can't have that anymore. And it turns out that this probable cause issue that lets landlords get away with this we can get around it by using the fire department. The fire department, can any place that has a chimney, any place that has any kind of fire, any kind of gas, can be inspected on an annual basis. So we need to uh, look at budgeting some money to train more fire inspectors. Uh, we need to talk to, to, to the chiefs uh, to get that going so that we can get all of these buildings inspected and then once, when they find the violations, they can turn them over to the building department and the police, and there's their probable cause. Uh, we also need to lobby at the state 
much more effectively than we have been, perhaps using Bill Bill's position as a leader in the um, what's the name of the organization? The Westchester Municipal Officials Association. Yeah, we need to get all of the the the, the mayors and, and and boards to lobby Albany to make it easier for us to go into these buildings that have 47 uh, satellite dishes on a single family home and have six electric meters on a house that should only have one, um, that should be probable cause and today it's not. And that has to change. But in the meantime, we can use our fire department for this. We do not have to wait anymore. What it needs is some time at the board level for the policy making and the budgeting thereof and coordinating with the fire department in the village and the training center to get people certified. And I've talked more than I should have about that. Um, overnight parking. We need, we need to set that up in a way that it is online, that it has a database, um, so that I have, a, I have a house that has an apartment in it. If I get a permit for one of my, for my tenant and she leaves, and another guy comes with his wife and they have two cars and I get two more, well, five years down the road, if, if there's turnover, there might be eight or nine permits listed at my house when there's really only one or two. If there was a database, instead of having to do an inspection and actually send people out every time, they could call it up and say, Bob DeRio has a one bedroom apartment in his house. He's got 17 parking stickers. Let's give Bob a call. Hey, Bob, what's that about? And then you explain that, well, 16 of them have moved away and there's really only one and they can simply eliminate them. And it, it will make it easier for the police uh, to run the um, registration, license plate, and driver's license to make sure there's no outstanding warrants and make that happen faster if it's all online and we're saving it. Uh, that's not being done yet, but I'm certain that we can get that done. We have wonderfully great people on our staff that can do that. Um, let's see. How am I doing? Uh, my parking commercial view. Oh. Don't, don't take all my ideas. Oh, yeah, I'm taking a lot of, well, <laughs> that's true. I'll leave, I'll leave you the rest. Yeah, I think, some. yeah, I'll leave the rest of you. Why don't you do the rest of this? Uh, yeah, Manny and I right. met, and Victoria and I met, and Bill and I met, and we came up with a list of stuff. And so this, the things that you didn't do, I've done some. Manny can finish it. Thank you, Bob. No, no problem. Appreciate that. Sorry, brother. It's all right. They weren't all my ideas. The, the, this was a conglomeration <laughs> of Bill, Manny, and Victoria. And uh, I would have talked to John, but he was on vacation. And I made the point of not talking to him in New Zealand. You know, it just seemed wrong to bother him on vacation. Look how rested he looks. Thank you, Bob. You're welcome, sir. Not for so long, but. <laughs> yeah, don't get used to it. <laughs> and you can't go anymore. This was too all right, much. Man. <laughs> all right, man. All right. On the village building infrastructure, I, I had a couple. It's just, to me, minor stuff. I, I know there's, uh, the mayor spoke uh, in greater length and some other items. Uh, and on the board, we've been talking about different uh, situations in regards to streets and st uh, street uh, safety uh, around the neighborhood. So to try to slow down in some areas the traffic flow, uh, trying to do either uh, street bumps or humps or stripes or narrowing or landscape or some sort of um, of that nature. Uh, I'm really concerned uh, still uh, in regards, I guess at some point I would like to bring Paul uh, and probably Laura Lee will be able to help us out with this, the sidewalk along Revolutionary Road. I want to bring that up uh, hopefully within the first quarter of this year. Uh, in code enforcement, um, Bob brought up uh, that the overcrowding and illegal occupancy. We do have laws for that. The state has laws and limitations. Uh, there was a work, um, a workshop, a building department, plan department workshop done last year. Um, I have to coordinate that with, with Chrissy. I would like to bring that back at uh, some point, uh, maybe the spring, early spring. Uh, so those those items and some of that stuff we can put them online. Uh, I have I'll have a meeting with Valerie at some point. Some of that information could be uh, helpful for a lot of people. Uh, Bob also did brought up the satellite dishes. I looked up in uh, different uh, municipalities the law itself. If you go to the website um, www.f 
cc.gov they have a whole guidelines uh, and, and in this regards and applications uh, for homeowners and actually the placement of what the dishes are uh, I, I had a it, it, and it's, it's a little bit more complicated than than, than what it was explained uh, before but there are laws and there are things that the homeowner uh, can do to the tenants not to um, not to stop them. No one can stop of someone putting satellite dishes in there. But there are regulations that, as a homeowner, you can do and have this uh, for for all these type of variants. I'll have some of that information. Uh, maybe have the building department post something in there. I have them here as a PDF. Uh, and and yes, uh, I agree. Overnight parking um, is a big issue, I guess. And and I know. Richard's office, I guess, uh, uh, the treasurer's um, office is handling that. Uh, at some point, I would like to see the, the process and how is that going, I guess, get a report from them um, and make it easier for them, obviously. Uh, commercial vehicles, overnight parking regulations, uh, we have talked about um, Briefly, with uh, with our lawyer, with Laura Lee, at some point there were some laws that we need to look into that again. I would like to have some uh, some information, some regards to that. Uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, I have a bunch of PDFs and different laws from uh, General Code on different uh, villages and towns in regards to that. At some point, before one of the our code enforcement left, we used to have. Uh, uh, one of them used to be from Monday, no, Tuesday to Saturday. I would like to bring that back. Um, I know we hire a new person. Um, I want to see what the schedule is, and I definitely would like to see that to be done like it was before because we were replacing that, that empty position, and I know it's a, different, it's, it's a different name now, I guess. Um, 360 e code is the general code. We we do have a lot uh, tools within that, and I think we're not using as a hundred percent. I think we should. Uh, I am going to be having a meeting with with Craig at some point. Yeah, the general code 360 is uh, a lot of municipalities around Westchester. Uh, when you want to look either uh, zoning law, building code. Uh, or just in general, all the laws on different villages and, and towns. You, uh, not everybody has general code. Not every municipality has, but the majority of Westchester does, uh, and around the United States actually they do. And I guess this has different levels of um, access from different municipalities. And what we have right now is like the premium version, and in the premium version. You get the opportunity to utilize um, a cloud system, so to speak. So you can get to do a lot more than what we're actually doing. For instance, uh, in other municipalities, you give your drawings as a PDF format or as a JPEG format. Uh, and you can actually, when it goes to the building department or the planning department, depending on what municipality you are, they put that directly online. So if you don't work, and a municipality, you go there, you type the address, and all the drawings are going to come up. Uh, the agendas, the minutes, all the approvals are right online. Are you talking about doing that for all projects or major projects? Or? They have, if you're doing a deck in this municipality, they put the deck online. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. Uh, so I, I did talk to. It's exciting reading. That's um, actually. The municipality that I talked is uh, Newcastle, mm -hmm. and I spoke to the building department in Newcastle, and they do that <coughs> every single time that they get an application. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so then I spoke to uh, the, the person who does uh, the type of training on, in, in general code, and um, she says it's really simple. She checked our, our account, so to speak, and she said we, that option is there. And I think we should utilize it. Uh, I did spoke to Craig, our IT uh, tech guy here, and he actually agreed with me. We do have the capability. Um, 
and I mentioned that to our village manager and him that I'm going to be setting up a meeting to understand uh, what is it that we have because he did say that we are our staff it is trained for this type of uh, for, for this type of scenarios so I just want to dig in a little bit more and see what we have so uh, I think that's very important for what uh, the Pace University study wants to do and come here and what um, applications online are filling in where we find the information how we utilize this uh, technology that is out there that we are paying for and then we need to utilize it a little bit more um, planning zoning and building I guess um, that's to me is a tough one because uh, we are doing a good job but I think we can do a lot better I think we can uh, we can talk about uh, the reinfrastructure of handling applications and the approvals what type of power does the development department have I know the municipalities take an application they look at it and if there's no need to go to the planning department doesn't have to go to the planning department and they just get an approval uh, from the building department directly and I know um, that's not how our building department works works a little bit different uh, technology again using the 360 um, I was told that there are some tools that the building department could use uh, from this general code so that's something that, that I think we need to look into uh, the last one for me uh, I know with um, the police enforcement we need to do uh, we, we had meetings with the chief the captain uh, and I know we are doing some but I think we need to do more is patrolling our downtown patrolling our, our areas in there um, I think we need to increase that uh, the foot patrol itself uh, may no bikes right now I don't think it's the weather for bikes yeah no right <laughs> but, uh, but definitely uh, Definitely, the, the, the increase the, the increase of uh, police um, visibility downtown, and I know there's there uh, because I I drive every day through that neighborhood, uh, but I think uh, we need a little bit more than that. So that's that's some of my goals uh, for this year. Um, so I'll thank you both know. for that, John. Um, Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, I, you know, I didn't have a lot of time to, uh, to prepare for this. Um, you know, although many of the things that have been discussed now are, are certainly things that I've thought about and heard about. And I think that, um, you know, just from hearing from the three of you right now that um, this is a group of people that, that's thinking really hard about how our village can have uh, a great quality of life and a place where people are want to come and live and and provide excellent services um, I think one of the big things that I'm really concerned about is how we're going to be able to maintain our services and and I know that that we've have a call to action to talk about the potential scenario of um, Governor Cuomo's uh, you know recent uh, uh, tax give back program where he's literally going to force uh, municipalities to live by the two percent um, and uh, if we don't then then our residents wouldn't get the benefit of the tax rebate um, I, I know that unless we get this figured out and unless we go there and find out what we're gonna you know what we need to do I mean I personally think that it's you know this is political gamesmanship at its best and I'm gonna just leave it at that worst well it, it, it is it is not good policy um, when the state of New York um, allows um, the Westchester County to to bond its pension payments I think it's the most economically irresponsible thing I can ever imagine because we're all going to be paying for those pension contributions for years to come when they could have when they should have been paid for in the years that they're taking care of and we here in the village we have to make those pension payments okay that's why we had the gap that we did because we have health care costs and pension payments that we have no control of and and to me all these things that we're talking about are very important for quality of life but if we if we don't have the revenue to do it 
You know, a lot of these things that we're talking about that are very, very important. We've got safety, we've got quality of life, we've got a lot of really, really important things. We're not going to have the funds to do that because people in the state of New York, and specifically the governor, is deciding how we're going to spend our money. And I have a big problem with that. So I'm, I'm hoping that, that everybody else in the state of New York will realize that, that, uh, that he's really disenfranchising us. Um, the other thing that I'm, that I'm really concerned about is, uh, or, or I want to see happen here in our village, and it's, it's very apparent, the parking issue and, and uh, the traffic issue and stuff is on, on where I live on Ferris Place, in which, you know, we've sat on a, on a, um, you know, on a petition from residents there for a while about two issues. One is that there's very congested parking at the end of the street, and, um, you know, it's no mystery that the cabs whip through there, um, the, the buses whip through there, um, but it really, it's, it's, it's sort of, it's part of a bigger problem where we need to really think about a pedestrian-friendly village where people can walk and bike and where we're not dependent on the cars. We need other, other options for transportation in, in this village. You know, we, we need some kind of a jitney or something that can get us around here. It's something that's been talked about one of the one of the really great things about um, the Harbor Fest was the uh, was the bus, you know, the the, the trolley. I mean, it, it was brilliant, you know. And and I think that if there's other alternatives, I mean, there's 27,000 people live in the village. I mean, there's a lot of people here. This is a really thickly settled place, and we need to think differently about how we live here, and how we get around here, and how we conduct our business. And, um, and, I, and so for me, you know, any strategy that we take that looks at those things, and obviously the, the, you know, the closure of Route 9, you know, which is basically a highway that separates. You mean the narrowing, not the, the closure. Well, well I'm, I'm just saying the, 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 what we're trying to do is make it more pedestrian friendly so that Route 9 isn't a barrier that cuts our village in half. And, and uh, I've always been troubled by that, and I, I'd like to see something happen there. And, and that's all part of the comprehensive plan. We've talked about that. So, so those are a couple of things that, are, that, that, that I'm thinking about. And, and I guess I just want to compliment everybody. And I know Victoria is going to come up with some great ideas, too, that, that this is a board that really cares about where we live. And um, everybody's thinking very considerately about it. And, and I just it's a, an honor to work with everybody here. So thank you. Victoria? Um, yeah, I mean, there's, I, I really have three things on my list, but I, I would like to comment on a few of the things that have been brought up by uh, my colleagues. Um, the three things are illegal housing, complete streets, and bees. I'll just start with bees because it's, it's kind of the simplest um, piece of legislation. And uh, we, we switched approaches to uh, how the legislation uh, would work um, instead of um, arbitrary setbacks being the focus of it. The focus now is more on uh, ensuring that anybody who decides that they may want to have bees is getting good information and mentoring and training and guidance on safe and responsible maintenance and placement. Um, and it's inspired in large part by New York City's <coughs> approach, which focuses on the placement and the uh, registration of hives. Um, and because they're a very densely po populated community, obviously, um, they've, they've been experiencing this um, with a, uh, a population that's much larger than ours, but in some cases is even more dense. And um, that was one of the big concerns when we entered this in, in our village. So um, I know that uh, Lori Lee just got back from vacation like two days ago. So we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll revisit that in the near future. Um, and then uh, have some more uh, discussions with the public about that. We started with some discussions uh, more informally um, at the library last June since I've been in office, and there was a, an initial discussion even a, a year earlier than that at least. Um, so I look forward to that moving forward. Um, the, the other two on my list are, are much bigger and more complex, um, and that is illegal housing. And uh, I, I'm, I'm very interested in learning what it would mean to uh, have more training for Austin firefighters, if if that can be part of, um, you know, having access to homes and making sure that people are safe. Because the problem with illegal housing is, yes, it puts our first responders and emergency workers at risk if they're going to go into a place that has, that's chopped up and has walls where they don't belong. 
Um, it's also, uh, it's environmentally bad. People are more likely to pave over their yards and uh, create stormwater problems. Um, it's exploitation of the people who live there and are the most vulnerable in our community. Um, and it, it can um, increase unfairly the burden of all of us that are paying taxes appropriately for sanitation and stormwater runoff in schools um, if there are more people in a house than there should be. And uh, I know some people wonder, is this perception, is this reality? I, I, I see it in my neighborhood, so I know it's happening. And um, I'm interested in finding out what we can do for the firefighters, that if that's something that the department is interested in doing and if something we can work out. Um, I also really um, was uh, in more optimistic uh, after the conversation that um, we had, sorry, it's freezing in here, um, that we had that uh, Manny brought to our attention with um, some of the, uh, the regulations that are in place in other communities in New York State that, uh, that put a little bit of the burden on the, um, the homeowner to demonstrate uh, that they, in fact, are not renting out more of their house than they're zoned to rent, some of the, those particular communities. Um, I think one of them is quite nearby that uh, I, I'd like to see us investigate that more intensely and see what we can do to give more tools to the people in our community who are trying very hard to um, ensure that uh, that all of our housing stock is being used as appropriately and safely as possible. And um, we had somebody come, uh, Veronica Vanterpool came from uh, the Tri-State Transportation Campaign um, to talk about Complete Streets. Uh, Bill also attended, um, uh, I think like a two-day seminar on traffic calming measures. And um, in fact, we were just having a conversation a bit with somebody. And as it keeps coming up over and over again, whether it's Ferris Place or Revolutionary Road or um, so many other a road here and a road there, um, uh, I would like us to have a Complete Streets policy in place. And along with that, um, an approach to making sure that one of the things that Veronica pointed out is that this works in communities uh, when it's not the five of us who are saying, okay, this is, we're going to deal with this street, this traffic calming, and, um, but rather that it's born out of the people who are living in the neighborhoods who can tell us, this is the problem here, cars are going really fast here, or, you know, there's ten times more cars than there used to be, and have the conversations with the people in the community. So to put in place mechanisms and a structure so that that can really happen. And it doesn't mean that we suddenly are going to have tons of money in our road work uh, budgets, but what it means is every time a road, road work is done in a neighborhood, if that neighborhood has already been part of this process, we have um, an understanding of what would really make sense here. Oh, well, this road has to be repaved for some reason. Well, now's the time to paint the lines in a different way or to restructure the parking or the curbs or put in a crosswalk or do a bump out or whatever has been already thought about because once the asphalt's been ordered and the work's being done, it's too late for that. Um, so it would be an ongoing rollout, but the first step has to be a coordination with the people in the community that are experiencing it because they're the experts on our, their neighborhoods. You're an expert on Ferris Place and you know all the right people to talk to and, and I can talk about my street, but um, we only live on five different streets. Um, I wanted to follow up on a couple of the comments that other people had made, and uh, uh, I really liked a lot of what Bill Hanauer had to say when he opened up and talked about um, the potential opportunities for consolidation, um, whether it's with sanitation or police or parks. I don't know how um, realistic any of those possibilities are, but I definitely would like us to pursue any opportunities for consolidation of services that could save money for all of our taxpayers. Can and I just add something yeah. to that? In the second year of the governor's proposed plan, if we don't consolidate, even if we stay under the 2%, if we don't do some significant consolidation, our residents don't get the break. Okay. That's why I brought that those up. So much inspiration from our governor. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Bill and, uh, and, uh, and Richard um, and uh, Tom and I are going to be uh, starting to have meetings. I think the schedule is every two weeks, and we're going to be um, investigating more deeply all of the, um, the elements of our expenses and what it would mean if we were to stay within the 2% tax cap and um, going forward. Uh, I, 
I, I wrote about it um, recently after we went through the budget process. Um, as frustrating as and grossly imperfect as the 2% tax cap is, I do think that there is some value to providing a, a number, a target to keep in mind, and that it does force um, some greater attention for some of us in, um, in how we're spending if we have a goal. Um, and unfortunately, we didn't meet that goal this year as much as we would have liked to, but um, this, this new approach that Albany may be taking is, uh, is, um, is interesting, and I, I look forward to our investigations on that front. We must never lose track of the fact that uh, were it not for the uh, pension contributions that Albany insists we pay, we probably would have been under the cap. Right. Never mind the health care expenses yeah, that, ex health that went up 10 percent. But um, I also, uh, I, I, I very much would like to see LED lighting, which is, as, as um, Bill mentioned, a, a big upfront expense. But if you look at, I mean, obviously Yonkers is larger than us, but if I've seen their study on the incredible amount of money that they're saving just within the first year of, of transitioning to LED lighting, so it's not just a green thing. It is a very much of a long-term financial investment. Um, you know, we're a very, we're a, densely populated place with a lot of um, public lighting and, and it could be even brighter and cheaper. So that would be wonderful. Um, and uh, Bob, I have never heard uh, from all my environmental chats um, about solar that there's uh, concerns about firefighters. I mean, it makes sense, but um, I'm going to ask about it and find out. And as far as um, uh, I, I wouldn't at this point be um, spending a lot of our time, and, and unless there's more to it than I realize, on um, the permitting process for solar in the village, um, only because I'm aware that Sustainable Westchester, actually Southern Westchester, started an initiative last year. Um, solar panels are actually getting less expensive, the, the actual hardware, um, and the installation of it is actually less expensive, but the soft costs of marketing it and getting through the permitting process is increasing. Um, so we, as people who may want to put solar on our home, are not seeing as much of a benefit from the cheaper technology that we should be because, um, you know, the, uh, the infrastructure, the people infrastructure for getting it there isn't keeping up. So Westchester County has many municipalities. Many of us have all of our own hoops to jump through, and that is a big expense for the um, the installers. So uh, Sustainable Westchester now when it's official, um, but countywide we're looking at doing an approach that um, might be piloted this year within a few communities. Perhaps Austin could be one of them. I will, um, I'm on the steering committee, so maybe I can talk to who we need to talk to and see if we can be part of that. But it is something that um, some other people might do on our behalf and we can take advantage of the any, any online um, applications and use templates that might be created. And that's, it's a, it's a good use of, uh, resources beyond our own uh, our own doors um, and since you brought up the sculpture exhibit I thought it was wonderful Richard that was that was Richard's uh, brainchild and I thought it was an outstanding exhibit and my son was one of the first graders who did the tour and very much enjoyed it and we did it as a family too um, that was great success and uh, along those same lines um, I would love to hear if there's more happening with the Sing Sing Museum because I think that would be um, really terrific. There will be a meeting. Uh, Sandy Gala said that she wants to put a meeting together in this first part of the year. Uh, she said January, but we're already well into yeah. January. Um, and she has to deal with the governor's stuff yeah. at present. But uh, there will be a meeting on it, and we'll see where we can go with it. Okay. The, the one other thing that is kind of big that I, I have reservations about. I, We've had a, a lot of development that I am very excited about. With um, Avalon, there's going to be hundreds of people coming in. We have a few, you know, between perhaps the Stag Group uh, at the We Can Do It space and then the other property um, that has, what, 14 apartments on uh, 133 in Linden. Um, you know, that's another, what, 30, 50 people. Um, so there's going to be hundreds of new residents in our community this year in just those three developments. Um, and, and, you know, maybe Harbor Square will break ground. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, I, I, I agree entirely that Market Square is not right now being used to its highest and best use. And it is, um, 
not nearly the asset to our downtown that it could be. Um, I also am concerned about moving forward too quickly right now with that development. I, I would like us to see how we can best incorporate the hundreds of people that are about to enter our community and make sure that they're shopping in our stores and they're part of our community and we're figuring out all the traffic patterns to get these hundreds of people and their cars into our community and around our community um, and take advantage of all of the influx of disposable income from all of these new residents in our downtown as our downtown grows and expands our existing businesses I think we'll have access to a greater quality and greater number of developers and potential for development in those spaces. So I'm, um, I'm leery of rushing forward with distributing an RFP for that space. So. You know, I've, I've always said, um, and I know that uh, John Nolan and various other people who have taught me a lot um, believe that commerce follows population. And I think when we see uh, 168 units on North Highland Avenue go up, that uh, diner that's been empty for years now is going to be an incredibly <coughs> valuable piece of property which will become a restaurant. And I think we're going to see more uh, commercial activity almost immediately, mm -hmm. almost as soon as these buildings are built or maybe even before they're completed. Uh, I'm not sure that we will see um, Avalon completed this year. They said 18 months, okay. um, f but it is all, you know, it's nine months now. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe the first building, maybe the second building, it'll come online one right after the other. But you're right, we have to deal with, with all of those uh, new people. It's very exciting, actually. Mm -hmm. well, I, do, I do have something else to add, uh, it, uh, that current talking about those big projects kind of remind me of something that uh, a couple of people approached me I guess in the past and a little bit of complaint I guess uh, typically when a project decides goes in effect the plan department does a great job in um, notifying the people around them and this like a, I'm not sure if it's a, it's a hundred uh, feet radius or 500 foot radius uh, notifications go out uh, but uh, there's been complaints from other people around the village that you never got the notification, you never got the letter. The reason why you don't get the letter is because you're not within that range. But that doesn't mean you should not be involved in that particular project, especially when you have a big project like Avalon that we can do aside. Uh, the project down in uh, across the street, almost from Sea Town, uh, that we had um, a few complaints uh, in regards to that. So one of my suggestions, I guess, um, and I think we touched briefly uh, last year at some point, where the plan department should require the, the builder or the owner of, the, of a project, a big project like that, not a small residential uh, addition on the back or deck, uh, but a big project like that to have a big, I don't know, four by eight poster in the front of notifications of what the process is, where the application date uh, presentation is to the plan department or to the zoning board. So actually public will be involved as well. They can choose not to go, obviously, but if they're in the neighborhood, if, if you miss by one house, I think you should not be rejected that you're not notified. I mean, uh, something like that. So maybe we can bring that up and we can t talk to Valerie, talk to Al, see where that goes. Okay. that's. Uh been a very good <laughs> exercise, I think. Yeah. Really? So we are actually going to increase the budget eight times. Uh, right. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, we need a firehouse, too. Oh, yeah. So, is that, that it? That so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, write these all down. I'll probably put them under these categories if you're good I'll with that. I'll email you mine. What's that? I will email you mine. No, I wrote everything down, um, so you don't have to email them to me. Um, it's good I'll with you. Excuse me? 
I'll I'll leave them empty anyway. You can, but it's unnecessary. But anyway, if it's okay with you, I'll put them under categories, or mm -hmm. put, and then I will send them back out to you. And if you would then um, prioritize them, it looks like about 50. <laughs> if you could prioritize them one through, you know, to your highest priority, send them back, and then we'll collate them, and then we'll get back to you, and then I think we'll probably present the highest, maybe 15 or 20, I don't know. We really want stuff that's doable during 2014, so. Um, I think in terms of priorities, <laughs> we, we really need to uh, go through each of the categories and prioritize within the categories, because it may be that uh, things look doable in one category that aren't doable in another, uh, and to put the, the ones from the other high up within that 10 or 15 may be inappropriate. So we should categorize within categories. Good idea. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, thanks for all the input. It's very valuable and, um, of course, learn a lot and also uh, a lot of things we know that we, we have to deal with and we've been talking about it for a while. So thank you. Okay, the next thing, uh, item on the agenda is a uh, brief discussion, uh, Treasurer Tom Warren on the um, outstanding uh, water invoice at Sing Sing Correctional Facility. Tom and I went down and had a meeting, a very good meeting at the prison with uh, some of the officials and so we're now ready to resolve this issue. Thank you. Tom? Um, yes, um, good evening, Mayor, members of the Board of Trustees. Good evening, and, um, Tom. We'll have to talk about um, goals for uh, 2014 is scheduling something more interesting uh, following a discussion like that versus um, <laughs> scheduling an accounting and auditing issue here. Um, as uh, you know, the um, uh, prison had uh, contacted us uh, last year um, to uh, inquire about um, the uh, billing of uh, water consumption, um, and we researched the matter, and we reported back to you um, in October, and, um, you know, um, most of our readings are done with um, electronic uh, devices that um, read the meters automatically. And for some of the larger accounts, such as at the prison, it's a setup issue um, where you tell the, the um, meter gun uh, which, which digits to read. Uh, so um, we did find that we did um, overbill the, the prison. And uh, from that time that we uh, reported back to you back in uh, October, um, it, it took until early December before we, we were finally able to find a common date uh, to meet with officials at the prison. Um, we met with them and we compared numbers and um, they got back to us um, um, later in December and they said that they agreed uh, with our numbers and they said that they would um, allow the amount to be offset against uh, subsequent billings uh, for the prison. Uh, so, uh, but at the same time, they also um, mentioned, you know, they have a, a, a concern similar to ours. Um, I wanted a, a village board resolution for the auditor's purposes because it's not often that we uh, do billing adjustments uh, such as this. Um, but the uh, prison also wanted a, a resolution and they also need a letter of support from the village because um, they actually pay the county sewer district based on water consumption. So. If the water consumption has been re reduced, we have to help the prison um, recoup that, that money from the county sewer district. So um, I did write a resolution uh, for the next uh, board meeting um, asking the uh, board to authorize the uh, billing adjustment uh, to the Sing Sing Correctional Facility uh, for the um, cubic feet uh, that we had mentioned here um, in the resolution for the period of time. Uh, that was under re review. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes, um, thank yes. you. Thank you, Tom. This was much fun, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks. And uh, further with Tom, a, a discussion update. We have a, a certiorari order on a Two Broad Avenue. So this is uh, sort of business as usual, but Tom can report in to you. Um, go ahead. No, I just want to make sure you had it. I got an adjust billing. Yes, we have our very first. Uh, Tax tertiary claim for the uh, new year. Um, it's for property at Two Broad Avenue. Um, as you know, the um, because we uh, utilized the town's assessment role, um, the town is the one that negotiates uh, tax tertiary claims um, in conjunction with the um, Supreme Court and um, of New York State. And so uh, we have a 
Texas should reclaim refund of uh, $8,505 um, to be uh, presented to the board um, for approval and payment um, later in the month. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Item is the uh, board liaison reports, Mayor. Yeah. Well, let's start with Victoria. Oh, Work okay. in that direction. All right. Um, well, uh, just last night, uh, Bill Hanauer and I were uh, attending an event for Family Ties, which uh, I have the uh, honor of being a liaison to, and I haven't had a lot of interaction with them um, in the first year other than um, that I serve on the uh, Communities That Care um, group as well with um, the lead of uh, Family Ties in Austin. And it was a, it was a really lovely event, and uh, Bill presented a proclamation to the group for all the work that they do supporting um, families of children who have uh, some challenges. And they do really great work for uh, the families and make our community stronger. So it was nice to be there. It was, a, it was a holiday celebration that had been rescheduled after snow last month to just a cold night but no snow. Um, and uh, it was a really joyful event, a lot of young kids and everything. Um, and uh, Austin Communities That Care is partnering with the uh, Austin Documentary and Discussion Series that I mentioned earlier. Oh, what did I do with my little poster? I'm going to put that up again. Um, because... <clears throat> Next week, Thursday at 6.30 at the Austin Public Library, in case you missed the beginning of the show, uh, is the, we're screening Bully. Um, and uh, it's a movie about bullying. And uh, we're going to have some folks on the panel, one of whom was himself. He's now in college, and he was bullied as a kid. Um, and um, he's going to offer his perspective. And then we have a woman who did her uh, doctoral dissertation on bullying and the effects of that in the community and how to respond to it, and also the uh, the trainer who trained the, um, the folks in our school uh, in the bullying, the Olveus program that we have in the Austin School. So it should be a really powerful night, and I hope you'll come out. It's, it's not for young children. Uh, the film is appropriate for children uh, middle school age and up. So if you have a middle schooler or a high schooler, we'd welcome their participation. Um, and then um, it's not just for parents. It's for all of the community. We all have a role to play in uh, being a safe and kind place for, um, for us to grow up where children are not abused by bullying. Um, and I'm grateful to be partnering with uh, Austin Communities that care on that. They've shown this film before, and uh, this should be a, an exciting audience to, uh, to work with. Um, and then I also posted earlier, I encouraged everybody, if you're interested in serving on either the Environmental Advisory Council, um, Bill and I uh, started the interview process tonight um, for folks who have submitted their resumes and letters of interest already, and uh, we have some some really terrific candidates, so I'm looking forward to filling the empty slots on the Environmental Advisory Council. Uh, that council, um, they review the environmental impact of any potential developments in um, most areas of the village, um, and then they, that's what they're required to do, um, but the, uh, the group that's there now, particularly with the influx of some, some new exciting uh, participants, is uh, looking at you know, what else they can do to uh, help the village um, better achieve some of our sustainability goals and um, many of the things that were put forth in the comprehensive plan, and, uh, and it should be an exciting group. Um, the Landlord-Tenant Relations Council, we also met uh, this week, and that was the first time I'd met with the group. Um, they all, they ha are required to meet if a big issue comes up um, in a building uh, with a landlord that the tenants feel they're being, you know, not treated fairly, or, or something could come up, and, and they would help mediate it. Um, members of the council have also uh, been helpful to individuals in mediating um, landlord-tenant disputes. Um, but they, they also are empowered to do other things, some of which we were talking about earlier and um, as it relates to uh, overcrowding issues, because they, they can, not specifically, they're not talking about code enforcement, but understanding um, what is the housing in Austin and, 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 and have a better account for, uh, you know, taking a proactive approach to um, thoughtful housing. Um, and it's, it's something that the people there really care about and they have a mind um, thinking about the, uh, the comfort and safety and, um, and overall uh, um, asset that our housing can be and comfort for the people who live there. And um, there's one spot open if you're a tenant and you would like to participate in this council, it meets, both of these groups meet monthly, there will be some participation, and you can contact Christina Papes at 914-941-3554 uh, or cpapes 
uh, at villageofossening.org or go on the village website, villageofossening.org, and read more about them. Um, and with that, I turn the mic over. Thank you. John? Yeah, I, I, um, I don't have anything to report um, for rec parks and recreation or uh, for the fire department right now, um, but I did have a waterfront um, um, vision meeting uh, prior to coming here. And um, there are a couple things that um, uh, we're, we're working on. Um, we, you know, last, in the beginning of December, we, we had tried to uh, put together a concert at the train station, uh, and um, we had a little hiccup with Metro North. And uh, so we're going to do a reapproach on that, and uh, we really want to make that uh, happen. We think that's a way to uh, generate some activity, um, obviously on the waterfront, but also at the train station during the winter months. And, um, you know, we feel we've got, we, we want to use a local Osning talent to come in and, and perform. And uh, we think it's a, a, a sort of another opportunity for us to, to, um, to show Osning's talent. And it's, it's, a, it's really a wonderful space. Um, the other thing that we're working on uh, that's been a work in progress is the uh, historic kayak tour pamphlet. And uh, that's, that's moving along pretty well. Uh, we've gotten some great support from Valerie and the Planning Department of getting a map that we can use and then um, identifying um, launch locations as well as the locations of the different historic things that you can see from the river. And, um, you know, that's sort of a work in progress. We've got some more editing and things to do. Um, and uh, Captain Craven's been involved with that and um, his uh, his deep knowledge of uh, the river and the historic locations has been super helpful, and uh, I thank him for his uh, contribution uh, to that. And um, so I think what we're we were thinking is doing some kind of a launch. Maybe Earth Day would be the day that we would you know kind of launch the distribution of the pamphlet. Um, we want to draw, and maybe we can get a kayak rental company to come in around the same time. Usually it's kind of cold that time, so we got to. But, but that's one of the things that we're planning as a possible date for the for the launch of the pamphlet itself and and things of that nature. Um, uh, you know, we're thinking about waterfront concerts and things of that nature. Uh, you know, doing the planning for that and thinking about work with Henry to to do that. Um, and uh, uh, we'll also be coming to the um, to the board with a report. I'd like to get on the uh, on the agenda sometime in a work session in February to have uh, the, um, the Waterfront Vision Committee come and make a presentation about, you know, kind of what, what we've done this past year and kind of talk about our thoughts uh, as the waterfront evolves in Austin. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Manuel? Uh, not that many, uh, actually there hasn't been any meetings. Um, I have to go back and I guess check the chamber. I uh, believe they meet first <coughs> Monday of the month, so the meeting next week. Well, you met already this week, yeah. So I missed that one. Sorry, uh, but there is a meeting for the HPC next week. I know they actually are getting together on Saturday uh, to work on um, walking tour, or the historic walking tour. They are meeting on uh, the, the whole group, and I think uh, we're gonna get something pretty soon because I know with the help of James uh, as a consultant, it's been a great help for them. So. Um, and I know I'm not the liaison uh, for the town, but uh, I was in the town board yesterday, and it was uh, really exciting to be part of that as well. So uh, I'm not gonna not gonna promise it to be there every Tuesday, um, but I'm gonna be there as much as I can, at least three times a month or twice a month, at least. I, I think uh, we can definitely work together. So and that's Good. pretty much what I have. Well, Hi. Yeah, I am the liaison to the town board, and I love that Manny came with me last night for the first one, and that we'll be sharing that. Um, and uh, I would like to introduce at this time uh, Kim Jeffrey. Uh, Kim is the town liaison to the village. Kim had her very first meeting as a town councilwoman yesterday, and we're, everyone's excited to have her on board. Um, it was interesting to uh, see the way different uh, municipal bodies work together. Um, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be very fun. Um, I will be attending three out of the four um, town meetings. There's um, one meeting a month that I can't be at because I have another commitment. But I'm sure between Manny and I, we'll have full coverage, which is very cool. Um, one of my other major functions is the voucher review, 
there's not a single dime of your tax money that goes out without a trustee reviewing it. And uh, that, that duty currently falls to me. So, you know, expenses big and fall, small from a, a box of paper clips to a brand new fire truck, all of it gets reviewed. And I have to tell you, I could not be prouder of all the departments uh, because everybody is being so careful with your money. Everybody is working together and doing a really good job of making sure we get the best bang for your buck because it's your money. Um, every $200,000 approximately of our budget represents 1% of the tax levy, um, to put that in perspective for you. And um, we are being very careful in these tough economic times because we know everybody's feeling it, not, not just municipalities, but every household is tightening their belts and we're gonna do our best to make sure that you get the services that you've come to expect. We want to keep improving those services. We're doing more with less, and checking the vouchers every, you know, every two weeks is one of the things that helps make that happen, and I'm happy to do it. Um, none of the other committees have, have that I'm liaison to have met this year so far, so I'll be reporting back as they come up, and uh, we'll keep moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the U.S. government, I, I've already said that I'm working with Nita Lowy. Uh, she canceled today's meeting, yesterday's meeting because of the weather, but there will be a, a meeting, in, I think, in the next week uh, on that. The New York State government, uh, NICOM is meeting, um, that's the New York Conference of Mayors, is meeting in Albany on February 9th and 10th. Uh, and Westchester municipal officials um, are going as a, a bunch of us are going. Uh, and then we meet with the New York delegation, uh, New York, uh, what the uh, Westchester delegation on Tuesday morning and do some lobbying. Uh, so we'll be there from Sunday to Tuesday, Sunday afternoon to Tuesday, not, not Sunday morning. Um, <clears throat> The Westchester government um, is uh, not um, back in full swing uh, in relationship to us yet this year, but they will be. And congratulations to uh, to uh, Legislator Borgia from this body and from this area for her position as majority leader of the of the legislature. Um, the Intermunicipal Leadership Council doesn't meet until the first Friday in February. Uh, there have not been negotiations, but as I said, uh, I would like to sort of move that along if that's at all possible. Um, Historic Hudson River Towns is meeting next Monday um, for a, it's the full uh, group. It's not just the executive board. So uh, everyone is invited to that. It's Monday at 3 uh, at uh, Tarrytown Village Hall. And uh, that's it. The ambulance district, when is that next? February also. I February, think. I think. Uh, so that's it. Okay, thank you. So if we could have a um, motion to go into executive session for the purposes of discussing uh, Personnel, specific person, and also obtaining legal advice on outside. So meeting. moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So we are uh, now ending the televised portion of this evening's meeting. Please remember to be warm, to be hydrated, to look in on your friends and family uh, and people with small children, the aged or handicapped people. Have a good week. Uh, don't trust this weather. It's going. It's going to get warmer, but it's going to get colder again. So good night.